So we have a lovely simple still life of a pair today which is going to go through how to achieve the light and the shadow and how to build up with some layering techniques. So off we go. So I've got a still life of a pair to show you today. So I'm going to show you that I've popped the pair onto a piece of paper so I can see the direction of the light and the shadow. I'm just going to move this out of the way because I've drawn out the pair, try and keep it as steady as I can. What I'll do is I'll take a photo of the pair and pop it on my community page so you can have a go yourself. Okay, so I'm going to come onto the pair itself straight away with a little bit of water. I'm going to use a round number 10 and a round number 6 and they're the two brushes I'm going to use today. got a little bit of cadmium yellow so that's what I'm going to start with. I'm going to do a couple of layers on this pair so that I start to get the really nice colours and textures coming through and I'll talk you through the colours as I'm doing them. So I just loaded my brush with water and I'm popping on a layer of cadmium yellow not rinsing my brush out, I'm going straight into some cerulean blue. It's a really nice, makes a really nice greeny colour. Let's move this around. not too concerned about shadow at this stage i'm more concerned about getting the color right i'm going to pop a tiny bit of raw sienna here because it's a little bit more yellow there Going to go down to a number six, pick up a little bit of sepia, just going to dot around the stem. Just starting to move, create a little bit of texture really. Just pop a few little dots on. So this isn't particularly strong. thinking about getting some of this sort of brown bits added on just stroke through we'll worry about the shadow in the second layer okay I'll dry that one off nicely dry now it, it's looking flat but that's okay because what we're doing is we're using watercolors we're using transparent or semi-transparent colors and we can layer so that's the important thing to know I'm going to come into the shadow next because that's going to ground the object so I'm going to wet the shadow and I have got some purple lake on my palette Purple is a great shadow colour, as is, as is a grey if you're going for white. If you don't have purple late, you can use anything to make a purple. So you could use a rose and cobalt blue. You could use an alizarin crimson and ultramarine. So don't be limited by not having the colour. It's all about an exercise of learning how to layer colours, an exercise of brush control, an exercise of light and shadow. So what I'm doing here is just creating the shadow onto here. Based on what I can see on the paper. Now I'm going to dip into a dark brown because what I really like to do is whilst it's still wet 
is accentuate the dark underneath. And when you do that, it helps the pear to pop out. So it's just blending in where if it started to dry, then you just want to pick up a bit more of the purple. It has slightly dried there and just blend it in a little bit. But you can see already now that's looking like it's on a surface and it's standing forward. The direction of the light is this way. So I am going to come in to this stem with a little bit of sepia. bring it down this edge, rinse my brush out, and just touch him with a wet brush. I can take a dab of that raw sienna in, the other side. If it runs too, too far, dry your brush off and lift a bit more back out. You are in control. Take a bit thicker paint, drop a bit more in as it's starting to dry. If you can get a nice dark bit down here, that works great as the stem going in. I'm going to leave just a few little bits. I'm just dabbing a little bit up there. A little bit of a highlight there. It's quite a big stem on this pair. Okay, I shall dry that off. Okay, so that's nicely dry. So now I'm going to layer. I'm going to layer more colour on. So if I dip into the yellow, so predominantly I'm looking at this now and it's a bit too bluey green and not enough yellow. So I've got my cadmium yellow here. I've got plenty of water. I'm just going to glaze a layer over. What I am going to start to think about this time is where I can see the light. So I've got a bit more light here, a bit of light there. Now, there's nothing to say you can't do multiple layers. If you want to see how this dries before you then start putting shadow on, you can do that. There is no particular rule. It's just about creating what you can see. I'm going to take a tiny bit of this purple in whilst it's still wet the purple lake or whatever purple you have used. If you curve round a little bit, I'm just starting to create a dark side and a light side. You can see a lot of shadow coming down here. That whole thing is if it starts to dry, then just take a little bit more painting. Just blend it in a little bit. With those areas you've left there that are lighter, if you just use a damp brush, so it's not wet, it's damp, and I'm just rubbing the surface just so it softens in that line because I don't want it to be too hard and lightens that area a little bit as well. Okay, so I'm going to dry that again. Okay, so bit by bit this is coming together. Um, what I'm going to do now is do a layer of green. So I'm going to use the cerulean blue that we used before. Take some of it into the yellow. And then we're going to come over. I'm 
Now don't eliminate all of your yellow. So some of this is a, a lot more yellow. So if I stop there, dip into water and just soften that edge in with a little bit of water in the middle, you don't need to go fully green over. You can always take the water on first as well. I'm going to dip into the cerulean blue just with a round number six. I'm just adding a little bit more in places. When you mix a colour on in, in one go, it tends to look a little bit flat. It's quite nice to have these little bits of additional shadow in here that work quite nicely. If I dip into the sepia, I can pop in a little bit. I can see a little bit of shadow there and there. It's fairly dark, so I want to try and get those little discoloration marks in there. Some bigger ones here. You can do a lot of dotting as well to get some in. I think a, an indication of some tends to be enough. You don't need to put absolutely everything in. Just if any of them are really dry, just make sure you've You've softened them in a little bit with a tiny dab of water. It's looking pretty good, right? So I'm going to come in with the purple again now. So I'm just looking at that shadow again. Just sweep some of that through there. So this is soft shadow. We're going to do hard shadow in a minute. And that's going to bring it all together. So just look at neating in those edges. That's looking pretty good. I'll dry that one off again. Okay, so that's nicely dry and I just want to pop a bit of hard shadow in. So I'm going to use the purple. I'm just going to make sure that it's not too strong. And pop in a little bit here. If you squint, you can often see where you need to go with this this harder shadow. It's just where those darker bits are. Swap down to a number six. Just check that I've got those edges in nicely. It sort of ties it in with the shadow that you've already created on, on the surface as well. So I've got that little bit there this bit coming over here, a little bit there, and then this little bit here. And then as I dry that off, it'll blend in nicely. So I'll just dry that. And there we go. So that's um, blended lovely as I've dried it. It just it just goes in and you see those layers underneath. There's a transparency and the beauty of watercolour is you can build up with those layers. Um, so that's just a simple pair with a shadow for you to have a go at practice and practice at. If you've enjoyed this one, I'll pop a link for another um, beginner's tutorial here and a beginner's playlist just here. Please do like, subscribe and share and I'll see you next time.